So the Cairngorm is a three-person tent. Before, usually when I pitch any tent, trying to make sure that the ground's flat. Um, I also try to make sure it's not somewhere where there's a chance of water collecting overnight. Um, just because you arrive in the dry doesn't mean it's always gonna be dry over the course of the evening. Start off with just rolling out the tent. When you get the Cairngorm brand new, it will come as two separate parts. You'll have the inner, which is also the ground sheet, and then you'll have the, the outer. And then along with that, you've got your pegs, your poles. Before you go out, it's always best with any tent, even if you're familiar with it, to have a dry run in the garden or in the living room, even if you haven't got an outdoor space or a public park, just to make sure that one, you've got everything that you need, and two, to make sure it's all set up properly, you're familiar with it. Um, so in this case, what I would do is that if it's brand new, I would get it up in my, in my living room and um, attach the inner to the outer so that when you need it out on the trail, it's ready to go. You just need to put the poles in because it's an external pitch tent. Um, it's not an inner pitch first tent. So um, that means you can pitch it all in one go really. Makes it ideal for if you're pitching it in the rain, for instance. The tension band system, which goes underneath. So on loops like this, um, what tends to happen is that sometimes people might see the pull tab. Luckily, Vanga, what they do is that they sew it up so it can't be mistaken as the tab that you put your peg through. With this, you put the peg through that bit there, then put it in at a 45 degree angle to the ground. That means it, it's pretty solid. And then also the reason why you put it through there is so that you've got an element of adjustability as well, so you can tighten it up or loosen it. Um, usually what tends to happen is that it, when you pitch them first time around, they can feel tight, but especially after a night's worth of rain or just condensation in the morning, they can sag a little bit. So if you're staying at that campsite for a little bit longer, then you can tighten it all up so that it keeps the fabric nice and taut, it means you're less chance of having water collecting and it will just sort of run off. Now stick in the main hoop. So with the inner, you've got the two ends. Everything is attached through these little toggles here. And they just go into the, these little rings. So usually go around the edges. You've also got the clips here for the ground sheets. They just go there. So with these straps, They'll be deployed. This is what is called the TBS2 tension band system. That's proprietary and is only used in Van Gogh tents. Um, so these will be attached when you get the tent. But at this moment, when you're attaching the inner, it's just a good idea to, just to pop them away for the time being. Or just pop them to one side if you want, but they've got these handy little pockets you can just quickly stuff them into. I'm just kind of starting low and going high. Velcro seam here where these just pop into. So as I said, you know, this is all stuff that ideally you should be doing before you actually head out onto the trail because otherwise it slows down your pitching time when perhaps you might not have much of it if it's raining or, or anything like that. Once the inner has been all clipped in, um, then the last thing to do is, and again, this is totally optional really, depending on where you are. I quite like these having being deployed all the time because it's just always there and ready to go in case you do need them. It goes through this uh, little velcro seam here again so you can seal it up and hopefully there's less less chance of any insects coming in and you just attach it to the top there and then there's another one on the side here again just feed through the buckle and just pop it there and for the time being, um, we'll just leave those loose until we get the rest of it pitched properly. You've got two strut poles. So although I've pitched all three of these pegging points out, I'm actually gonna remove this one so I can insert, it goes there, it goes there, 
and then effectively it acts like a bit of a kickstand really. Put that now slightly closer to the tent. And then this guy line. So this is what will give you your vertical head and foot room on either end. So we'll do the other side as well. And again, I just like to make sure that this is all spread out nicely and, and taut. I try to get as much of it taut using the pegging point as possible and then leaving the buckles for the sort of fine tuning. So a common mistake with this tent and also with this style of tent is that usually people will forget. So they'll do something similar to what I did earlier when I was setting it all up is peg out all three of these pegging points taut. And what, that, what would happen is that you'd end up with the base like that sticking out. And what you don't want, you don't want to do that basically, because what happens is that the roof then starts to droop. So these, this design of tent relies on this almost being vertical. Then that way you've then got the height here and then you can then tension it using this and using these. And what you're looking for is a nice taut fly sheet with as few sort of droops in it as possible. And again, we can try and get most of that out just by moving around the last bits, the last corners. You'll also see that you'll have some additional guy, guy lines they're always handy to put down. Um, one, it takes out uh, the strain if you're in windy conditions. Um, it just spreads the load out to, to the guy lines. I try to make sure that they're at least on a 45 degree angle to the tent. And then also, when you pitch your tent, you don't want the winds to be hitting it side on. Now, that can be quite difficult depending on where you are. Um, if it's a really mountainous environment or hilly environment the wind can come from all different directions but um, it's good to try and at least anticipate so what this will do is that if you're able to put this into the direction of the wind it will then mean that if that if you are going to get broadsided by a wind then at least you've got this guy line to take the to take that pressure really so pop it in loose 45 degree angle then you can tension it up you don't want to put too much tension on it, but you just want it to be kind of nice and taut again. Um, it helps spread the load off of the pole. What's nice about this tent is that you have got enough pegs basically to cover all of your pegging out points, as well as guy lines. There are some tents out there that um, aren't as generous with pegs. Being nice and orange as well, if you are going to be on a campsite rather than out on the hill, it means there's less chance of someone tripping up on them so they're nice and visible even at night. Rather than be laid out on the side like we had done it, I would usually stuff this right into my pack just to make sure it doesn't fly away. So what I'll do is I'll seal it all up just so it's nice and tidy to fold away. What, what isn't nice is that if you've got a bunch of the fabric, uh, if you've got the fabric all bunched up, kind of doesn't fold evenly. And when it's not folded evenly, it's not gonna roll away nicely. And it means you end up with, a, with an awkward size or shape um, of tent when it's packed away. Also try to brush off all the little bugs and just seal this all up. And then after that, I, start, I, I look at it as going from the outside in. So I'll start by taking, taking out the pegs of the guy lines. So after taking out the guy lines, what I'll then do is just unclip these clips. And again, you'll see these on a lot of other tents. They'll tend to have an initial sleeve and then they'll have a clip at the end just to do the final tension. Um, again, undo that. And then afterwards you can then go ahead um, start loosening off the little, the corners here. It'll be a little bit more forgiving for you, for you 
when you're packing it away. And it's good to loosen them up so that the next time round when you're using it, they're, they're loosened and it's easier to pitch. So with the poles, always push them through. Don't, um, don't ever pull on them. So lay, lay it out there, unseat it there, push it through whilst sort of slowly moving the, the sleeve along it. I'm doing it this way so that it doesn't get caught on anything like it did just then. Reason why you push it through is just so that you avoid any section getting caught. And what you don't want to do is get to a point where you're then pulling a section apart because that's how a lot of poles end up getting broken. When pitching the poles, as much as it's tempting to, it's never, it's never good to just let it seat itself um, just because the bungee's there. It's always good to try and assist it as much as you can because again, what you run the risk of, and this is a small detail, is that sometimes the edges of the pole section can then start to get like little chips and those little chips can end up either causing a failure point where it might split in bad weather um, or when pitching it, or it might cause a sharp edge for the bungee to again potentially fail at. So when you're seating it, it's always nice to seat it with some assistance um, rather than letting it find itself. To the impulse. Something that's handy to note, if you're struggling to get the tent pegs out, um, what I tend to do is just get another, another peg, loop it through the, uh, the hook there, and then just pull it out like that. When I'm folding away the tent, I, what I'm effectively trying to do is turn it more into a rectangle. Um, so the sides, for instance, where the vestibule or the porches are, tend to roll this inwards like that and again you're already starting to see a nice neat rectangle shape there if you're on your own and you're on a windy day have your pack on the other end just to weigh it down a little bit or have your pack on this end where you're at fold this end like that, lay your pack down so that's then weighted. And again, fold it into thirds. If you want to roll it with your, with your poles in the middle, you can do, because again, it helps with the rolling, helps having a bit of pressure. Um, but also at the same time, if you are backpacking, sometimes the tent is actually not that handy as a tubular shape you might want it in a totally different shape depending on how you've packed your bag you can have this on the side of your pack and then you can fold this however way you like and as I'm rolling I just try to make sure I give it a bit of a wipe so I'm not trapping any bits of grass or any bugs or anything like that or any dirt and rather than rolling it towards me I'll kind of roll towards it so I'm not sliding it all over the place and every so often just tidying up the edges. The more time you spend doing this, hopefully the less time you are trying to wrestle it into its bag. But saying that, what's handy is that you've also got a nice wide open bag. up the cordage and then tighten that down there you have it it is always good practice to try and get as much of the water off as you can um, before you then roll it away because what you don't want one it adds weight and two if if it's gonna be packed up for a long period of time, um, it's not gonna do the fabric any good and it, it will end up damaging it long-term. 
So yeah, try to shake off as much as you can. The other one is just kind of, you know, with these, just give it a little wiggle like that. And usually the DWR coating that's on there is enough to, for the water to start beading off. That tends to help it as well. When you get home, best thing to do is get it dry, um, clean out the inside, because inevitably you're gonna get blades of grass or insects in there and stuff like that. But make sure it's totally dry, including all the guy lines and all the, all the webbing as well. That will all still be wet, so it's best to keep that all dry before you then roll it away for long-term storage. I even clean my temp pegs because I want my temp pegs to last. Um, especially ones that if they haven't got any kind of anodizing or coating on it. In terms of aftercare, so there's a number of products out there. Um, tent and gear solar proof from Knitwax, um, or Fab Seal from Grangers. Um, those are two products that um, will work absolutely fine with this. It's absolutely recommended depending on how often you use it but you can usually tell if it's starting to sort of soak in and if it's starting to what we call wet out on the fabric then it's probably a good time to start thinking about reproofing it most important thing is just keeping it clean as well um, but uh, another good thing to get for it when you've got a tent is to always get the ground sheet protector as well it helps with extending the durability. Also, if you find yourself in a more arid climate where it's drier and there's more rocks, it helps to just add in a bit more protection because the fabric is, at the end of the day, quite thin. Um, what you don't want to do is put, put a hole through it.